interrupt this video with breaking news. The professor is waiting for you to like and subscribe to Movie Community College. The professor would also like to declare that the Super Kings are the best team. How's the Josh? Now back to the video. Namaste, Mitron. Welcome back to Movie Community College. Oh. How are you, friends? Oh, I'm tired. I was talking to our oh, friends. Man. Um, Maranam Tishhe with the professor. You gonna say it? Pradyapak. What? What's up, everybody? Hi. I'm gonna take a nap during this one. No, you're not. Oh. I don't even know what this one's about. This one is, uh, you get, I got. Don't ever drink really fast carbonated beverages before you go do videos. Ah, oh, man. Dear, I have warned mm. you about how quickly you mm. drink your pop. Too fast. Oh, man. Too fast. I'm trying to keep from belching on camera. Oh, yeah. We don't need that. Um, I got an email today. Oh, well, by the way, my name is Jeremy. And yeah. you always you always say you need to introduce yourself because we have a lot of new people. This is true. Oh, we have a lot of new people. That's true. Yes, I was looking Hi. at the analytics. Hello, Hi, new, new people. Friends. Welcome to Movie Community College. Yes. I am your charming professor, That's and uh, Sumya will show you around campus. Or Kumar, maybe uh, Kumar, Kumar will. or Rahul. Yes, Rahul maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, Amit Singh God may be. Maybe. Anyways, There's a whole host of friends. You can I show got you an around. email um, from these people. Uh, they are the Festival of Bharat, mm. or the Bharat Festival. Mm. Intriguing. I've never heard of them before, and I don't mean any disrespect to them. No, there's a and, lot of people we've never um, heard yeah, of. Yes, a very, a very big world to the professor. A lot of people have never heard of us. That's shocking, well, I know, right? I know. I, know. I wish they would and subscribe. Yeah. And uh, they sent me an email and said, we're a fan of your channel, and we do this festival of Bharat, and we do it in India. Makes Th sense. Then it goes, yes, it makes sense. Just saying. Then it goes to the UK, hmm. and then it goes to America. Mm. And uh, we would like you to come speak here. And I went and looked at. They their, should come to Phoenix. Yeah, well, um, I went and looked at who they've had on there before, and they've okay. had uh, Swami's been on there. Mm. And uh, and I and I said, well, that's that's pretty good co company to be in there. Uh, so here's a little clip of them just to react okay. to. Uh, I don't know if we'll get in trouble over it. Um, I hope not, yeah, let's take a look at this. Francois Gauthier. The mirage of majoritarianism and the myth of intolerance. François Gauthier was born in France um, in the early 80s. He began freelancing in India for different publications and finally ended up being the correspondent in South Asia for the Geneva-based Journal de Genève. Then one of the best international newspapers in Europe. In 1993, he switched to Figaro, one of France's leading newspapers for which he exclusively worked for 10 years. He also starting reg started writing regularly for Indian newspapers, first in Blitz Bombay, then in Hindustan Times, later came the Firangis column in Indian Express and the French Connection column in The Pioneer. He was also the contra regular contribution uh, maker for Rediff.com, New Indian Express, Times of India and other uh, prestigious blogs. Francois, who is married for 25 years to Namrita, shuttles between Pondicherry, Pune and Delhi. Put your hands together for Francois Gauthier. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. I'm first going to address the myth of intolerance because this is one of the most baffling and incomprehensible myths about India. India is a land of tolerance. If you see today in India and yesterday, every persecuted religious community has found refuge in India from the Christian Syrians, to the Parsis, to the Jews. You know, the Jews, the only country in the world where the Jews were never persecuted is India. Uh, many of them went back in 1947, but there's still a few left it's in true. Cochin and in Bombay. Today, the Tibetans, every religious community persecuted in the world yeah. has found Kolkata. refuge in India. Why? because it's a land of tolerance. And this tolerance is due to one community, which is called the Hindus. Now, 
people see Hindus as a religion, but actually it's a spirituality. If you look at Hinduism, if you look at the deep truth of Hinduism, what props it from behind is universal spirituality that accepts everybody. Hence, India, land of refuge. So there's this great myth of intolerance about Hindus. And it's funny because it's been a one-way traffic. Hindus, on the one hand, have accepted that, you know, God may be Mohammed, it may be Christ, maybe Krishna, maybe Buddha, maybe Zarathustra. But they've been the most persecuted community in the world. So it's been a one-way traffic. And it always baffled me that the people who were the most persecuted in the world, who suffered the most, are today called intolerant. How, how did this myth come about? Well, I think the British are greatly responsible for it because when the British came to India, there were only a few and they needed, you know, to govern a huge country. And the main problem were the Hindus because the Hindus were the community that had kept its customs, kept its, you know, spirituality, kept its cultural f fabric. So the British set about diminishing the ego of the Hindus the pride of the Hindus. And, and I, I must say they succeeded admirably. Because uh, they were ridiculed by the British press, as today they're ridiculed by the Indian press and the international press. Then the British did something very smart. They <coughs> took the best, you know, the, the cream of the Hindus and they got them educated in Oxford or in Cambridge in England. And these people came back totally westernized and in turn their children and grandchildren and today you can see that the generation after generation generation of those people who were educated in uk no offense here you know um, are ru ruling india they're the journalists they're the you know <laughs> intellectual they're the, it's not the politician it's a different breed you know and they still make fun of hindus you know and this is where majority come because on this planet, out of six per, six person, one is a Hindu. Every six person is a Hindu. So Hindu are a billion in the world, great majority. There are a billion Hindus in the world. There's still about 800 million left in India. And they're one of the most educated, most law abiding, you know, they don't go about, you know, burning cars and writing and killing people. The children top most of the universities. You know, if you see in the US, they have this, uh, this spelling competition called Spell B. Most of the girls and boys who wins are Hindu. You know. Hindus do well wherever they are. Even when they're exported as laborers to Mauritius, you know, they end up you know, becoming respectable people, putting their children in universities. So Hindus is a you know, educated, rich community now emerging you know some of the top uh, you know, some, some of the top uh, ng uh, uh, ceos in the world are hindus politicians are coming a little bit they're starting to come out in the u.s and yet being one billion they believe they, they behave as a minority Okay, so inevitably <coughs> we're going to get comments that are going to say, why didn't you watch the whole video? That was, that the, was video. the whole that was video. video. Um, I am sure uh, that Francois spoke for much longer, um, but that's the whole video that, that we have. That was all he spoke so, and he left him on a cliffhanger. He just walked out. Um, Francois, there was something, je ne sais pas. There was something that Francois said um, about the Brits and India that made me think of um, an analogous situation. What was he that? was talking about um, the government of uh, England coming in and basically, you know, subjugating the Hindus because the Hindus were a community that pretty much kept to themselves. And that, of course, made me think of Adolf Hitler with the Jews. That's mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. what he did to um, the Jews starting in uh, his own country of Germany. Well, his adopted country. He was mm -hmm. actually Austrian. Um, but starting with the Jews in Germany, um, 
they kept to themselves. They they weren't they were not troublemakers. Mm-hmm. They weren't bothering anyone, um, and that wasn't enough for him to you know kill the Jews there. Then he had to export his terror elsewhere to Jews everywhere. Well, that's what the British government did to India. They went into their country and then subjugated a peaceable, law-abiding people that that were keeping to themselves. They they weren't causing anybody any trouble. So. I um, I can see why they would reach out to us. I think that, um, you know, um, my view of the Hindu uh, community is similar to his. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I see um, America maybe 30 years down the road of where India is going. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And in a lot of things that motivate me is to warn India, this is what's coming. Right. The destruction of the family, right. the tearing down of your community, mm-hmm. the the marginalizing of your Hindu culture to make it um, secular, to make it amoral, to make it more fit into the globalist. He's absolutely right about what Hitler did with, or your analogy, yeah, analogy is really analogy. good, yes, of Hitler with the Jews because that is, uh, the Indians had a Hitler. His name was Winston right, that's Churchill. That's what I'm saying. Yes, that's exactly and he what I'm did saying. the exact same thing. Right. And I and and I I have to tell you I have a um, real hard time with Winston Churchill um, because he's celebrated he's lifted up here as a demigod as this great historic figure that that we are so happy to have a relationship with uh, you don't you don't hear people say that about Mussolini you don't hear people be like you know our country was so tight with Mussolini he was such a good guy Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe Stalin was just Yikes. an amazing man. Right. I, oh, that was the highlight of our relationship. Right. And, it, and it's just crazy. And I think it, it points towards, you know, the globalist mindset. And I, I believe a lot of the globalists are over in London. They're, they, oh, yes. Yes, that this whole Which thing. Which makes that we're, sense yes, yes, because yes. Uh, remember once upon a time, you the know, sun the sun never, never set, set on, on the, the well, I was going to say that. We got great minds, dude. Great minds. Um, I, I am watching a documentary on Netflix right now. It's 12 years old. It's called The War. It's a PBS documentary, and it's about World War II. Um, and when the Americans, uh, you know, finally came into the European theater of the war, um, they landed in Sicily, and then they decided that they were going to go into Italy. Um, but Nazis were pretty much entrenched in Rome and northern um, Italy. And so as the Americans made their way up the country, um, guess who? Who helped them to conquer some of those Nazi enclaves? Who? Indians. Nice. Yep. I was very happy. Nice. I was sitting there watching it by myself, and I smiled when they showed that part. Um, so my question to you, my Indian friends, is uh, have you heard of these folks? If you have, tell yes. them, please come to Phoenix. Yes. And if so, do you think I should accept the offer? That's not even a question, of course. Um, and, of course. And I, what would I, sp- I, I think I would probably speak about uh, Hindophobia. And how, and maybe how um, it is a a mere image of what has happened here in America with Christians. Yes, and that would be very, very interesting. My guess is, my guess is, is they'll probably do, uh, you know, East Coast, Chicago, West Coast, and West Coast would probably be Yeah, if you come to West Coast, it would be L.A. That's close enough to Phoenix, I guess, but it'd be Um, awesome to come to Phoenix. Um. Not in the summer, though. Don't come in the summer. We're going to be adding a character, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. A a young man named... (gasps) Let's wait. It'll be a surprise. Well, he's going to have an interesting point of view. Yes. He lived for a long time in an area of California. Let's not say too much. He wants to tell his story. All right. He wants to tell his story. Woman. Woman. It's his story. He should be able to tell it. Oh, man. Okay, right now, how many of you are saying, that's just like my mom and dad? How many of you are saying, look at this, that's my mom and dad, look at them. Perhaps. Well, um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the love and support um, and uh, the growth. The channel continues to go. I really appreciate it. And um, we'll catch you guys later. Peace and much love. Bye. Greetings. I am Minamoto no Yoshitsune, number one samurai in Japan. And I am here to greet you on behalf of Movie Community College. The professor and the warrior queen would like to ask you to subscribe to their channel. 
movie community college. They are close to 200k and they need your help. Please like and subscribe to movie community college or face the wrath of Japan's number one samurai.